you know, it feels like a lifetime ago and, and uh, said that I won it and I was over the moon I couldn't believe it but uh, no, a great honour for me and my family of course Gavin yeah absolutely and of course in February of course you were into the swing of the league at that stage you'd reached the quarter final and you know things were I suppose kind of normal and then the whole Covid yeah, thing yeah uh, no one no one could, could actually see what what was coming Gav you know like it was it was uh, mad enough like even when even when when they said oh they cancelled it for two weeks we, we genuinely thought it was only two weeks and we thought we'd be back into the league because uh, it was cance- it was all ca- called off two weeks two days before uh, League quarter final against Kilkenny, like we were all looking forward to that, and then it was we were just told it was pushed down for two weeks. Little did we know, now we're here in uh, near the end of September, and we're just getting back started. And mm. It's a long little two weeks, if you think. Yeah, it certainly was. Yeah, and preparing for a winter championship, we'll touch on that in a minute. But um, of course, it was a busy period for you as well because you were with WIT into Fitzgibbon, and games were coming thick and fast. So, how, how did you find the kind of the balance between the college and, and the inter county? Yeah, it was between um, Liam and Finton. Was the Finton O'Connor was the manager with. Uh, WT at the time they managed it well between there was a couple of us Jack Prender Tom Barron Billy and Austin at the time as well uh, and was managed well it was a, absolutely it was a workload we would have been playing Fitzgibbon Championship maybe on a Wednesday and a league match then at the weekend so it was tough going but as I said you know, it was managed very well by the lads and uh, we, we weren't overworked at all like it was we were kept fresh mm, Absolutely yeah, I suppose that, that was important I suppose you know to have good working relationship I suppose between both manage, management teams that helps I suppose doesn't it Yeah absolutely like, the, like if, without that you know, there'd be, there'd be just, you'd be pulled at both arms and that just wouldn't work at all so uh, luckily enough you know, the, lads, the lads worked it out between themselves and uh, we were kept fresh for both for both teams yeah. mm, Absolutely and your first season of course under Liam Cahill who's the new manager and put a good stamp I suppose and things early on reaching the, the quarter finally you got those couple of wins in the league and Obviously, you're back at it now. Only since since Monday, once intercounty trend resumed. But what kind of a stamp and what has he brought to the table? I suppose since he came in. Yeah, he's uh, like he he has the accolades to behind him. You know, he knows like he's uh, he's done it. I suppose you could say with uh, Tip under 21s the last couple of years. And uh, no, he's he's uh, he's he's great. I I really enjoy him now. He's uh, he's as uh, straight as ever, but he's as honest as ever as well. You know, he's he. Uh, like training is tough as it is for every other county I'd assume but uh, it's really good and it's very very enjoyable Absolutely yeah and those league campaigns I suppose the win over Galway was, was a standout one in Welsh Park when I suppose you know crowds were permitted and of course you, you got a late winner that day and you heard well yourself and that was I suppose a real important game I suppose to win considering you would have had probably a, 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 two home games in the Munster Championship and obviously that went by the wayside but you know you had a good early part to that to that league Yeah as uh, like when we got the home games last year we kind of tried to really hone in on how important playing in Welsh Park is and I personally feel that now and when I do play league games in Walsh Park you'd feel the home crowd a lot more than you would say if I'm playing in the J grounds or, or whatever obviously they'd be on, on the opposite, opposition side then but uh, no I love playing in Walsh Park because of the home crowd obviously I don't know will that be the case this year but still uh, yeah like you'd miss the crowd around alright and uh, but it's just, we'll have to just wait and see how that goes in, in the future you had a great battle with Tip as well that day up in uh, Turles. Seemed to be uh, red cards being flashed every direction that yeah. day um, by, by the Dublin referee. I think it was Sean Stack. So that was, I suppose, a big moment. I know Tip got the better of you, but it was kind of a crazy enough game to play in. I suppose it was scores at either end and a lot of space maybe there as well. Yeah, I know. I, I, felt, I, felt, I, felt, I remember being devastated after that game because we came so close to beating them, even being a man down. Well, we had, we had two men down for some, for some part of the game, but uh, I was devastated over But we were kind of really sure by the management of how... It was almost not, a, and it was never a good loss, but it was a good loss in the fact that we, we really, really dug in to stay in the game, and with, with a man and two men down for a certain part, we we stood in and we uh, we worked really hard, which kept the management happy, I suppose. But uh, still. Uh, tough one to lose. You know, you never like getting beat by Tiff. No, no, that's true. And uh, of course, you played Limerick in your final game. Of course, above the Gaelic grounds, both teams were were qualified for the knockout stages, and uh, you know you were beaten that night. But again, it was a very competitive game, and you're looking forward to a Kilkenny game. Then it was just you yeah. know shut down after that. Like, and I suppose when you're so enticed in it, and when it's taken away from you, that that must have been tough. Yeah, I remember like the Limerick game. Even though we were both qualified, but I remember we were we were kind of trying to trying to focus on that a lot because we would have been travelling to the J grounds a couple of weeks after that to play in Limerick in the championship. So we wanted to get used to winning up there. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't. But it was still like the, there was a few fellas started that day that uh, hadn't in previous games and they really stood up and showed just shows the depth in the squad. Mm, absolutely, absolutely, and uh, of course, then COVID came in and there was the whole lockdown, and you know it, it looked for a while we'd probably see no GA action, but thankfully there was a bit of light at the end of the, at the end of the tunnel, starting with the the club activity and gradually getting back into it. Then, so first of all, how did you find those those couple of months being being locked away? It was tough, challenging. Yeah, it was t- it was tough enough. Um, physically, like physically, always you're trying to 
stay in some sort of shape mm. on, on the on the hope that there will be something and you hear a lot of this fella said that there were no way it'll be championship and like you're, there's a lot to be a lot of negativity just fellas just telling you to forget about it oh you're going off on the run like just forget about it and that so it's it was tough to keep physically in shape but uh, uh, you just just keep doing it luckily enough uh, like I've I had my brother at home who would be on to train as well so he'd be on to me a good bit as well so between the two of us we kind of kept fit as well but um, no it was tough but as well as I said luckily enough I, we didn't, I didn't uh, shut down at work so I still went in and out at work every day so he, he might say I'm mad, mad saying I was lucky that I had to go to work but actually for those couple of months I actually felt a bit lucky that I had to go to work to get up to get out of the house and and uh, stuff which a lot of people didn't have the luxury of doing. So mm. yeah, that's true. I suppose in some it's like you know GA and you know he's so used to being in a routine. I suppose of, of training during the week and a match the weekend. And I suppose when that's taken away from you now, and I've said it to a few people since that I suppose we won't take I suppose being out you know maybe two or three nights a week for yeah. for granted again, be it training or matches. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like like just the relief of when we when we when we came back to train with the club, it was just like obviously we went we done the protocols of there were small groups at the start mm. and that was all done which was a bit slow and it was a bit frustrating and everyone just wanted to start hitting off each That's other like in the match like but we were like well, you're not allowed to do it so it was slow to get back into it but just to even walk in the gates to value up again just it's just unbelievable because like just to not be allowed to go down to your local hurling field it's just it's a killer like but um uh just to be able to get back down there it's just it's just brilliant yeah and speaking of the club as well, of course, uh, you won the intermediate Eastern title. Great victory over Dunhill in, in a great battle. And I suppose both teams, you know, you've had some great battles over the years. And I'm sure that, that was a sweet one to win, having lost to them at the semi final stage last year. And, you know, win back a divisional title, I suppose, in, in, in the year that's in it, I suppose it'll always be remembered. Yeah, yeah, it was a fantastic win, I suppose. But because um, uh, at the start of the year, they, they would have beaten us kind of handy enough. And if you said to if you, if you said to us then that we'd reach a county final at the end of the year, like I probably would have laughed at you. So. Uh, while well, it was a good, a good year and as devastating it was to lose the county final you could say like what a great achievement for such a small little place to get to get there too like mm. uh, on top of that, that we're, we're a very very young team as well so we, you'd, we'd hope to maybe progress on that next year with our minors won well joined up Porto our minors won the uh, Division 2 county final not so long ago as well so a lot of them will be coming up the next two, two or three years so hopefully there's a uh, future intermediate title in Valley off that mm. we can get over the line yeah. mm, absolutely and of course you played your namesake Valley the Fupper in the final and uh, you know I remember doing the, doing the commentary and streaming that night and scores galore you know I think he scored yeah. what, it was a 223 and if you had said that he'd probably win most county finals but it was just yeah. it must have been a kind of a, a crazy game to play in yeah I'd say for a neutral now it was exciting to watch because it was just scores after scores but uh, yeah 223 and losing is t- t- definitely tough to take but you have to tip your hat to Valley of Fupper they're probably a better team on the day uh, all around the field, like they they were they were very good, uh, but we 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 could have done it just as easy as well. But uh, no, uh, congratulations to Valley Up on that one. Yeah, they they probably deserved it today. Yeah. Mm, absolutely, and I suppose finally back into the intercounty setup now since since last Monday, and uh, you know preparing for a Munster semi final against Cork. I think they're saying 31st of October in in Thurles. Uh, so I'm sure glad to get back to the meeting the lads. This wasn't meeting the management team again there on, on Tuesday night when you got back. Yeah, absolutely. Just to see the, the all the boys again. You haven't probably haven't seen them. You probably see, might, might have seen them in a few, going around or whatever, but you wouldn't mm. see them like you would now back on Tuesday. It's just to see the, f- the few faces again and again like like I said before, just hopping off each other again. Like it's uh, you'd be sore, but it's exciting as well. Like you really really enjoy it. And uh, even though the 31st of October seems like months away, it's actually only six weeks. So. We're really just going to be a slog now for the next six weeks and we'll get through it and then really look forward to hopping off Cork then. Mm, absolutely, and I'm sure, of course, the impact you made last year in your first season with some solid performances, I'm sure you're hoping to, to carry that into, into this year as well. Ah, yeah, but you can say solid performance last year, but we didn't win any mm. games, so uh, it's, a, it's a team sport at the end of the day. There's no point in playing well and losing, so uh, uh have to build on that this year now and hopefully do the best for the team to win a few games this year mm, Yeah and it is Cork in a Munster semi-final and of course the winners go through to a Munster final and then I suppose if you don't get over the line you still have a quarter final to fall back on so there's a lot at stake be fair to say that for the winners of that Munster semi-final Yeah absolutely but um, I'd say like when Cork saw the draw they were probably over the moon getting us so um, it's a really one to, to look forward to now and if you just think one one get over one game and you're in a Munster final is, is, is very exciting compared to what we would have been playing was four games in the league and then hoping you're, at the, you're in the top two to get to a Munster final so you could nearly say that this would be an easier road than what we would have had if there was no pandemic so now really really looking forward to it Gavin I can't, I can't wait for it now to be honest
Yeah, bring it on. Well, we might be in September, but we're eventually presenting you with the, the February WLR Grand Hotel Award. Well, so congratulations, Caelan. Yeah, appreciate it, Thanks. Thanks.